what rights does or do the drivers of vehicles have in terms of recourse? Uh, can claims be made to the Road uh, Accident Fund? To unpack this for us, I'm joined now by uh, attorney Gert Nell. He joins us now uh, virtually. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Nell, for your time here on ENCA, or rather advocate Nell, for your time here on ENCA. Just first of all, in terms of the families and uh, this case obviously going about to take very long because of the investigations that have to go into it, especially after a cover-up, uh, what recourse do the families, especially of those who died, have in the meantime? Uh, good morning to you and good morning to the viewers. Uh, I uh, think we just have to simplify the whole aspect around the complexity of the possible criminal issue that there might be. Yeah. Uh, as far as the road accident fund is concerned, this is a matter of uh, the issues uh, uh, would essentially turn around on negligence. So the questions would, wouldn't necessarily be you know, what was hidden from the police, what was said, what was not said. The question simply is, who was at fault? So if the family members, people that died in this unfortunate incident are able to prove who was at fault and that somebody else caused the accident and essentially the death of the uh, breadwinners, then obviously they would be able to claim from the road accident. Fund. Until they're able to prove who's at fault, they can't come claim at the RAF. They can, okay. uh, you know, what we, our approach is to lodge a claim as soon as possible. So you gather all the information that you've got, you get all the statements that you can get from the police. Essentially, for me, what I've seen uh, shouldn't be too difficult to prove as, uh, you know, some of these people that uh, passed on were passengers in the vehicles. Mm. It's actually easier to, to prove the claims against the right accident fund because you basically just have to prove that you were in that vehicle and that you were a passenger uh, or the person that died uh, to, to be able to qualify for a claim against the right accident fund. So I would really put the family members of the people who lost, uh, um, you know, family in this accident at ease by stating that uh, it's much simpler to claim from the road accident fund, you know, even having regard to the unfortunate, uh, you know, incident surrounding the cover up or whatever these people decided to do after the accident. Mm. Essentially, uh, with the road accident fund claim, uh, you know, it, the uh, balance uh, should prove your claim is much simpler than in a criminal matter. So. I don't think the families need to be too much of a concern. A bigger concern is for the people that try to cover this up. Mm. Obviously, they would have to deal with uh, the police and a proper investigation. So to that extent, there will definitely be some uh, repercussions. Mm. Uh, you know, there's a question I want to ask, and I want to be careful in how I'm asking it, uh, but I'm hoping you understand. So I spoke to the police in Limpopo during the course of this week, and obviously the question was on the criminal uh, aspect of this. Uh, why weren't all the drivers, why weren't blood tests taken of all the drivers, especially at that time of the morning on a Sunday, you know? Uh, and uh, they said that they couldn't of the two drivers who survived because they had left. We have evidence that uh, that's not true. But also uh, that uh, they were waiting for the post-mortem of the driver who died. So th isn't that a bit unfair to only wait for the post-mortem of the one who died when you didn't take blood tests of everybody else on that particular morning? What if it comes back and it says this particular driver uh, was intoxicated or whatever? Does it mean the RAF then also distances itself from this particular driver? No, not at all. Uh, again, uh, the question is about negligence. So whether or not you are uh, uh, guilty of a criminal offence being over the legal uh, alcohol limit, or whether you were driving with or without a licence, that is of no concern. The question is who was at fault. So um, it is, again, it is unfortunate that uh, it seems to be all a cover-up, but, you know, it, we see that often in road accident fund uh, uh, claims that people are removed from accident scenes, they injected immediately after being involved in an accident, making a blood alcohol test, um, uh, you know, of no value. So 
again, you know, in terms of the road accident fund claim, if that is a concern of the family members, I wouldn't be too worried about that. Again, the people that should be worried are the ones that covered it up. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, that was going to be my next question, in fact, if the RAF uh, sees uh, cases like this often. But you've answered that for me just very quickly, Advocate. Uh, in terms of the families coming to claim and the injured woman as well uh, coming to claim at the RAF, if and I'm hoping not, obviously, if their claims are declined, what other recourse do they have? What else can they do? Well, I can tell you if they represented by a competent attorney that, that's got experience in, in RAF work, it shouldn't be too much of a problem. Um, you know, the family members, uh, um, the um, ones that weren't involved in this cover-up, you know, uh, shouldn't have anything to be concerned about. This is purely a civil matter in which you prove who was at fault and who was your family member and whether or not there was, uh, you know, a loss of support or indigency to, to prove that you uh, were dependent on this person. So, again, essentially, uh, as far as the RAF claim is concerned, I shouldn't be uh, worried. Uh, the chances are that the claims would succeed. Mm. Uh, but again, I would advise these people to make use of a competent attorney that's got a, a, you know, a lot of years of experience in, the, in this kind of work. Mm. So clearly the RAF obviously is more of a civil matter part of it and not necessarily the criminal part. So the criminal aspect of it will not affect their claims? No, not at all. Obviously the road accident fund does their, their own internal uh, specialised unit that they investigate fraudulent matters, fraudulent claims. So I would uh, presume that if they pick up on anything onto war, they would definitely alarm the police, you know, to this. But again, the people that were innocent in this accident, innocent family members, uh, shouldn't be too concerned. I mean, obviously, if there are any information that stems from the uh, claims that are being lodged with the road accident fund, obviously it will be picked up by the internal investigation unit. And I, uh, uh, you know, accept that that information will be given to the police and they will deal with it accordingly. But as far as the claims are concerned for the family members, again, the, uh, it's two different matters altogether. Uh, there are new uh, proposed legislation that the Road Accident Fund is actually uh, published about two or three weeks ago in which they are clamping down or want to exclude people that were under the influence of alcohol from uh, you know, claiming from the road accident fund altogether. So at this point in time, we are busy uh, uh, submitting comments to the Department of Transport, but that's something for the future. It's not applicable to any matters that, that occur before that legislation is enacted, if ever. Mm. All right, Advocate, thank you so much for your time and for speaking to us. Uh, Advocate Gert Nalde uh, from the RAF, he is uh, speaking about what the families can do in terms of claims, of, especially for those whose uh, loved ones died, but also uh, for the injured woman as well. And of course, this can be advice for those of you uh, outside of the story who have experienced the same thing, like an accident.